it's Stu Sensei here with very red lips. I just had some spicy food. Um, here once again, every night, every night we're here. Night for me, maybe not for you, but every day anyway, we are here every day and we're practicing English together. But today we're going to have an interview with one of my friends and we're going to talk about teaching certificates. I haven't got lipstick on. I just had some spicy noodles. They were good. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Hi, Arianti. Nice to see you. Great to see everyone here. Yes. It looks like I have got lipstick on, though, to be fair. But that was just for my dinner. Hopefully, they'll cool down a bit. Looks like I've had, like, an injection or something, yeah? What would you call that? What's that called when they do that injection thing? Can't remember. How's your day been, guys? Nice to see you all here. Thanks for joining. I appreciate you being here. Many people around. Take my breath away. Bum bum. Bum bum. Bum bum. Ba -da 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 -da. Yeah, crack on and send me a message here. Uh, uh Rianti, no worries. <clears throat> How's it going? Things are going well, thanks. And as you can see, my lips are on fire. I really should have picked something else to eat before going live, but what are you going to do? It's an experience at the end of the day. Uh, but today we're going to be talking with a friend of mine called Richie. If you don't know Richie already, he's a teacher. He's a, uh, well, I'll let him explain more about himself, but we've had a session before um, and we kind of are taking apart some of the some of the things that people really believe about English. Botox, yeah, we go, yeah, you got it. It's not Botox. I don't think Botox is when you do it in your face, isn't it? But it might be in your lips as well, I don't know. Nothing that I've ever researched, to be honest with you. Um, but mine's just a special one. It's just called uh, spicy food instead. But yeah, I'll let Richie explain himself, about himself to you. But usually we unpack things that are seen as normal or things that are suggested that should happen uh, within the ESL industry. Today we're going to be talking about teaching certificates. Um, I think many of you already know my view on teaching certificates but we're going to run over it again and then also we're going to focus, we, last time we focused on accent so what we think about accent, how what we truly think and his opinion and he has a very special opinion because he's learned a British accent before and his level of British accent is very high but we both showed our views on it and um, we had a really good discussion so we're going to do another one now I'm going to bring him on right now how do I do that there we go I should know by now Richie it says you're unable to join why's that can you send me a request Richie maybe I can pick out your comment and just do it like that let's try So yeah, that is pretty much it for today. Got my cup of tea. Hi, buddy. Hello, my friend. You're right. You? Thank you very much for inviting me. Um, <coughs> it's going to be the highlight of my day, I'm telling you, because I always love talking to you. Because we touch, I think, we touch on really important, pivotal uh, topics and things like this. 100%, I agree. Uh, so do you want to introduce yourself? I know some people already know you. Yes, just, uh... yes, of course. Anyone who, you know, I'm a teacher. Uh, my name is Richie, Rich English. I've got my YouTube channel, um, Hello channel, uh, Hello profile, TikTok whatsoever. I'm from Hungary, but I lived in the north of England. Maybe if some people can recognize some hints of the um, northern accent or something. I don't know. And I've been a teacher for about... 17, 18 years now, I've been, yeah, I've been, I've been a teacher, I've been teaching a lot of people from uh, a lot of age groups, I mean, like, from an 11 uh, year old secondary school um, child to maybe a 77 year old pensioner, so it's wide range, I would say. Yeah, sure, okay, that's great, and you said that you lived in the UK for, yes, uh, yes, quite a bit of time as well, yeah. Uh, three and a half years. Yeah, three and a half years. Okay, that's great. Um, and obviously, 
you've been through the process of learning English. So yes, definitely. To start us off on this topic about teaching certificates. I'd love to know what was your opinion when you first uh, was looking for a teacher when you were younger, or or maybe you just learned everything through school. Did you try to find a teacher after that, or did you try and do it all yourself? What do you think? Uh, first of all, I started to learn English because I uh, I wanted to understand Tupac Shakur and Michael Jordan. That's it. That was my uh, actually that was the inspiration or motivation for me because obviously I'm I'm not a native speaker and I didn't understand what way what way they were talking about so I had to understand it so the logic that was really logical to learn English language and it sounded pleasant to me as yes. well um, and a high school a secondary grammar school I started learning English as you know, in an institution, I would say. But my English teachers weren't really good. Weren't really good because mostly they spoke Hungarian, you know, in an English class. About grammar and things. That's what we, we didn't really learn how to speak, how to communicate. We learned, you know, the basics of grammar and not just the base, basics of grammar, but very serious grammar but we couldn't speak if you know what i mean yeah and i think the gist the essence the most important factor of a language is using it not theoretically but practice it and use it in functionality if you know what i mean yeah of course i agree um Obviously, we have to have some input before we can get any output, but many places are just focused on input. And so just reading and just listening. Yes, uh, yes definitely. Right enough. The only output maybe is circling a multiple choice question. So it kind of does defeat the point, purpose of learning a language. If we only, the only things we do is not communicate, it doesn't involve communication. So, um, <laughs> It's great for understanding, but doesn't necessarily mean you can then take the opportunities that are available from you from that understanding. Yes, definitely. Definitely. Um, how and for example, oh, go on, please, 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 please. No, 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 please, 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 your question. Because I think you're going to ask the question, I'm going to answer. Okay, yeah, sure. So how effective were the teachers uh, that you had how effective did you how effective did you feel they were at the time not knowing anything about like uh, using English or just you know you were you were just in the class and doing your doing your thing how effective yep. did you feel their learning style the way they taught was for you teaching style? yes thank you very much for your question now to be dead honest really dead honest I thought I knew more than they knew things about English language because I started learning English language uh, by picking up natural things. I used to have a American accent because I uh, listened to a lot of rap music and um, you know I had questions they couldn't answer, they couldn't uh, you know describe, couldn't explain and I was really 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 flummoxed and confused about it why why, why can, can can you not answer my question you're the teacher not me I just heard this I just heard that I just picked it up and whatsoever why why can you not answer my question so I uh, actually didn't pay attention to any of my teachers and once actually my teacher said I would never have an English certificate language certificate uh, from English because she thought I I was not really good at grammar mm. although I spoke more naturally than she could speak if you know what I mean yeah of course okay so it was um, I think that's a similar situation to many people I think yes. teaching's changed a lot since we were younger though as well yes uh, in general, that's definitely. I think before people were very withheld and they didn't want to feel vulnerable as teachers um so they 
they would either create or create a reason for something being there or they would not explain it fully just say it is what it is or something along these lines you know um to to solidify their ability their belief uh-huh. or the students belief in their ability so i think that's just something that is a cult that was a culture it still is part of the culture but it was more so when we were younger yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely, definitely. And for example, because I used more natural English, and I had a lot of questions about, okay, why is it used? Why is it, okay, you know, we learn grammar, but I haven't heard this, for example, like a present perfect continuous or maybe a future perfect continuous ever in any kind of lyrics, in any kind of films. I haven't heard it used. Why should we learn that? Why should we learn that? And, you know, the uh, answer and the response always was, learn it. That's it. Okay, but that's not an answer. Why? If I haven't, if I haven't heard it used, why should I learn it? And I think it's a viable, viable argument, isn't it? Well, yeah, I, look, to an extent, yes, there will always be a time when you... To an extent, so of it's course. It's kind of like vocabulary. It's, that kind of example is kind of like vocabulary, in my opinion, like... We almost force feed ourselves vocabulary, even though we might not hear it. It's the same mm-hmm. kind of situation, um, and I prefer to chalk up things that you hear once in every year to just chance, and it is what it is, and focus my time. Yes, on definitely. Using the language. Because that's communication. That's the gist. The that's the essence of communication. Exactly. Why should I learn, for example, a word like, okay, I like this word. But why should I learn floxinosin amplification when nobody uses it? Instead of unimportant, if you know what I mean. Which I which I hear every single day. Synonyms, they mean the same, but why should I? It's it's just like learning quail just for the fact that it begins with Q, like kids do, you know. Kids learn language that's not necessarily necessary but fits in with the rules that are being taught which kind of defeats the point like i get why we teach rules i get it but i also feel there are other methods that can make people understand and sometimes i feel that teaching rules in that kind of fashion especially to younger kids doesn't create well if anything it disjoints the language we're focusing Mm -hmm. too much on singular patterns rather than actual flow of sentence so it's it's truly fascinating to me that whole kind of uh situation that isn't the name of the topic by the way guys the name of the topic is teaching certificates i tried to point up here we're coming on to that in just a second uh, but that's yes. the name of do you want to explain what it means uh, sorry once again i couldn't couldn't you catch really. that was something your word is and do you want to say it one more time floxinosin helipilification it means something that is very unimportant or very, very uh, unimportant ness, if there's a word like this, floxy, nosy, nihil amplification, or the adjective is floxy, nosy, nihil amplification. I like this word, and it means very unimportant, worthless whatsoever. Well, that's, that's the ironic thing. This word is literally unimportant as well, because yeah, the first it's time un- I heard this, it was when... Exactly, that's the irony of the word. The longest word they could find, or something like this, to put it in yeah, yeah, exactly. in practice. Exactly. What's the other one is the... Uh, Super beautiful, uh, uh, No, 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 that one's... I don't mind that one so much, because that's in pop culture, but the other one I have is the laryngologist, I can never remember what it is, but volcano. Uh, the otorhino, otorhino micro silico volcano coniosis. This one, I don't even know what it means. I never heard it until people started posting it. To exactly, me. It exactly, exactly. So, Why learn it? Why learn it? So it's rare that you don't forget it. So again, yeah. back to grammar. Anyway, it's kind of that's my kind of theory about those kind of things, rather than. Rather than not, we, what I think we should do is come up against that. We shouldn't be so ordered, you know, like we must learn present tense, bada, 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 and then yeah, yeah. tense structures. How yes. about we learn it when we come up against it? I think it mm-hmm. should be more like that because the frequency of those tense points that you're talking about 
is rare. So, yes, yes, exactly. For example, while I was living in England, I haven't heard any native speakers literally using the future perfect continuous ever. And I lived there for, for three and a half years. Now think about it. I haven't heard it used for three and a half years. I only saw, for example, the future perfect simple in contracts. For example, uh, let's say when we had to move out of a uh, tenement, you know, that was there. That, that's when the future perfect simple was used. Because, you know, it refers to a certain time and something should be uh, completed by that time. So it's, it's kind, of, kind of like agreements and that's the language of agreements and contracts and whatsoever. I've never heard any native speaker to use even the future perfect simple. <laughs> Not the future perfect continuous. They used, for example, just a simple <laughs> Or maybe a future continuous instead. And that's no, because it. Because I think that we simplify language. Yes, definitely. So I think that when as... That, that Look, a key thing to remember for everyone out there is that we, we're not saying we don't teach these things, but we're trying to clarify what we actually see in everyday life and how yeah. the focus... When, when we focus and we really study a lot on things that are unnecessary, you are wasting a lot of time. I'm not saying yeah. it's completely unnecessary. I'm saying that no, it's the not. frequency, if we're talking about frequency, you've yeah. got to look at frequency. What, like that's yeah. why I always say, it doesn't make sense for me for someone who lives in Brazil, who's going to be speaking English to people in Brazil with other Brazilians to learn the perfect British accent because you're going to be speaking yeah. to people who are using English with a Brazilian accent. So they'll understand. You should only change your accent if you're moving, really, or, or if you want to get a wider market but I like I don't get that kind of thing and I think we waste time in certain areas it's not necessary when we could be uh, improving fluency and but you know but you know the ESL and the EFL industry really tries to kind of incorporate into your mind from the beginning and it tries to incorporate into your mind that you need to be perfect you need to use tenses perfectly. You have to have a perfect British or American or Australian accent. And you need to have certificates. Which is... So we need to go back on to that. <laughs> the global, in the premier plan, in the go, uh, global scheme of things, it's actually not true. Because I completely agree, because... Um... On all of the points but we should come back to the topic which is teaching certificates since we haven't <laughs> my fault we haven't really touched on it but um no no that's okay that's why i love you you know that's why i love talking to you because we touch a lot of topics but please go on sure i think that um in terms of teaching certificates i know the problem and what i find in that situation where we we rely heavily on on certificate certification of any kind to be honest with you uh especially mm -hmm. for people that we don't know which is, mm -hmm. if it's someone you don't know, I get it, because you have nothing to run off of. That makes yeah. sense. But, and I think the reason why we still think about teaching certificates so much is because of, one, you don't know someone, or two, um, basically it's, uh, it's held over from the pre-internet period where you couldn't check out yes. the person in their lessons. So now, yes. it's like, now it's like we're like Big Brother. We can see everything. So it's a great opportunity for us to check to see what the teacher's like and see their ability level and see if they can help me with my actual issue. Teaching yes. certificates are great because they bundle all the information together and give you it all in one nice little parcel that you can learn from. But the key thing to remember with anything is that all courses, uh, the, the completion rate of most courses is like 5%. So regardless of what course you've done and, and what certificate you have, it doesn't, the complete, that's just relating to completion half the time. It doesn't yes. relate to how good you actually are at giving the information. Having the knowledge of it doesn't relate to you can do the output side of things, yeah? Sorry, I spoke for a long time. 
No, that's okay. You know, I completely agree with you. Because, for example, there were qualified teachers, you know, they were qualified teachers who I learned from. But I couldn't understand, let's say, that's an example. Yeah, just an example, a plain and simple example. You know, difference between the present perfect and the past simple. They were qualified teachers with BA or even MA degrees in ESL or EFL or teaching English whatsoever. Even CELTA or DELTA uh, certified teachers. And I, and I couldn't understand them. I understood the difference between the present perfect, simple, and the past simple by conversation. Now, uh, let me, and I still remember that conversation. It went like this. Ashley was one of my co-workers at the hotel I was working for. And it went like this. Ashley, have you seen the match? Richard, who is me? Ashley, have you seen the match? Richard, which one? Liverpool versus Arsenal. Yesterday. Richard, I have. Ashley, did. What happened here? What happened here? What happened here? Because of yesterday, my answer should have been did instead of have. Yes. And, and you know, because, you know, it was about yesterday. Okay, the first question was in present perfect, have you seen, because there's no time adverb. I asked, because there, were, there was no time adverb, okay, which one? Because Liverpool and Arsenal are a really pretty old ancient team of the Premier League. So which, which, which match, which match are you talking about? Liverpool and Arsenal. And he realised that he wasn't specific. So that's why he said yesterday. But I, I couldn't kind of uh, process it that he said yesterday, which is the past simple. And then I answered back, I have. I answered back, responded back to the first question, which was present perfect simple, without any specification. And then he said did, because he actually corrected me grammatically. Yes, sure. And, do you and think that's that, how, sorry. Do you think that your your error would have affected the conversation then? Once again, please. Uh, do you, sorry. Do you think that your error would affect would have affected the conversation though? Even if the person no, didn't. it wouldn't. It wouldn't. It wouldn't whatsoever. Yes, I understand what you asked. Yeah, I understand your point. It wouldn't. It wasn't actually. Uh, if we, if we look at it in a from a commun uh, communicative standpoint, it wouldn't. In, grammatically, yes, but communication and grammar two different things. Yeah, of course. in my opinion. Yeah, we can see that from many different parts of England as well, especially in the location you were in. Yeah. So you can... Yes, definitely, that. definitely. He just happened to know the difference between the present perfect and the past simple. And he corrected me. And that was the conversation, that was the conversation that made me understand the difference between present perfect and past simple. And no other BA, MA, Celta, Delta, uh, um, degree certificated qualified teachers they were they were you know giving me definitions which had no sense and i was even more no confused yeah. i was even more confused and this simple conversation made me understand the difference yeah for sure i know i i i it's very interesting to hear the story and especially as um, especially as it shows a good way of learning as well you know through just that conversation you had and the fact you're using the language um i do think that what you said was very important as well like in a lot of cases again we must clarify this is not every single person that you meet who's a teacher who has a certificate but you do see people who are just repeating things that yes. are written down on a piece of paper. The key exactly. part is the application, isn't it? Showing exactly. application. Mm -hmm. Yes. I can do it as well. 
Everyone can do it. Here's a piece of paper. Just read it out loud. And does it make you a teacher? But to, to an extent, if you're able to get a message across, it depends. It, like that's a whole different conversation. I think. Like, if as long as you're transmitting the message to someone else, I mean, technically, we're all there's no there's nothing new here. We're all teaching the same thing, and we're all you borrowing from the same books and the same or the same material, just repeated over um, in different ways. But then I think the key thing is how we adapt it to our own style and, you know, show our own examples from our own experience of what we've thought about is key. Um, because if you can create your own examples from something like that, show the application of it, then you can also break it down because you've made it. You've made that example mm -hmm. yourself. So. That's what I always do. That's what I always want, and that's what you, I suppose you always do. It's not just a prefabricated piece of paper or whatsoever that's gone through. I'm not through. organized enough for that, unfortunately. <laughs> I wish I was. Huh? I said I'm not organized enough for that, unfortunately. No. I wish I was. All right. But it, it really doesn't matter. Sometimes, you know, my, my teachers couldn't reach me, I would say. Because I felt they were fake, sterile, if you know what I mean. Yeah, of course. Uh, do you think, here's an interesting question, something I've really been thinking about a lot. Do you think that students think about teachers as if they know the whole subject inside out? What, but do you actually think that you can segment the subject of English into certain areas that you could specialize in just like a doctor specializes in uh, oh, surgery course. or something like this do you think that it could happen that the same thing could happen within english of course of course certainly i'm for example not and i'm honest i'm i'm not a person who's who's like a uh, how can i put it um mm, polyhistor I'm not a polyhistor. I don't know everything, every single, the tiniest and the finest details of English language. I don't want to. I don't want to. Sure. I'm more interested in accents, dialects, sociolinguistics, and communication. I think they are, there are better grammar uh, teachers of grammar than me i cannot teach for example beginners i don't have you know the patience and i don't have the the skills to convey a message and i'm totally fine with it but if if you give me an advanced class or a close to advanced class like a b2 a b2 plus a plus or a c1 class i can do wonders if you know what i mean yeah, yeah, of course. I think, yeah, I think it can be segmented. And I, I think that the, many people have the idea that an English teacher can do all, is a jack of all mm. trades. And whilst mm. many of us have like abilities in all areas, because you have to, to an extent, so you can an extent. knowledge. I don't think we, a good example is like knowing in, knowing the difference between every small synonym within English. I think that's one that comes up to me quite a lot. I get a lot of requests for certain things um, that there are very minute differences and it's mainly because of the history of the language and the words, the words coming in at different times that I, and something I've never been thought about, I've never thought about myself or I've never actually been asked about, you know, and then there's the, there's the other side of this where maybe many students don't realize, but regardless of the knowledge you know you have to have the you have to have the practice of teaching like you can if you've learned a language you've almost been you're you've had a sense of like practice in teaching in a sense because you've been teaching yourself but as a as a teacher who just goes into a course from nothing from before and then in anything it doesn't just have to be teaching but when they come out the other side, having all the knowledge is there, but they haven't necessarily had the chance to apply it to someone. And we have this image of how good our lesson will be. Uh, <coughs> a 
a preconceived idea that everyone magically understands everything. And then we begin to come up against these barriers, you know, we begin to uh, hit these issues that mm -hmm. we wouldn't have even imagined. But for me, um, we sh it's not just, it should be a combination of experience and knowledge, but it doesn't have to be the result of a course certificate. I think there's too much weight. I think certificates are important. I think there's too much weight on that side at the minute. Do you get what I mean? Like I think it's far too heavy there because oh. you don't to to pick a teacher just because of the certificate. I don't know if that's enough because the teacher might not know how to teach to you specifically, and they might not know. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm how not. To, they might be good at planning a lesson and lecturing you. They might not know how to help you apply it to an actual conversation in real life. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, I'm not saying that everyone needs to move to the country. If someone wants a American accent, it's the 21st century now. There's YouTube, there's applications, anything, really. But before that, as you said it, <coughs> your only chance was to move to the country and, and to the uh, native environment to learn, uh, to learn how to pick, how to learn, and how to pick up, you know, the language you want, wanted to learn naturally. Now, we've got applications, we've got YouTube, we've got everything here. And, um, and it's no use now, I think. But, what I'm trying to say is that, that um, and I think I have lost my train of thought, because I was going to say something really quickly, um, that this whole thing and the whole atmosphere, ambience and aura of teaching and learning has changed over the years, especially COVID, uh, that no one has to kind of rely on one source, one kind of material, one kind of accent dialect and one kind of feature either. They can rely on themselves, put, 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 you know, the effort into it. And, and what, what I'm trying to kind of imply and infer here is that, um, even a certified teacher, maybe it's not the best option, if you know what I mean. Yeah, and, and I want to kind of wrap up so we can start answering some questions. I have to go by 11, unfortunately. Okay. But let's, um, I just want to, if you've got any questions, guys, chuck them in the comments, please. Um, but that, that was a really nice one. Chuck them in the comments. Chuck <laughs> them in the comments. Yeah, yeah. yeah. On, but I think... I think the interesting thing to me is why, what is a common thing that I've seen is that people go to university and study, which is great. And I'm happy to have hear that one a secondary issue to this whole conversation is that by the way, everyone's going to university and getting a degree. So um, I don't know how much weight a degree will have in the future because it's like a tattoo. Yeah. In the, in the 80s they were cool because not many people had them but now everyone has one so yes. there's not so much uniqueness not yes. so much mystique around them um, yes so definitely I think the same you know, about any university you know degree. that's what I try to imply before you know the internet era if you went to live in England Australia America you were like a genius now because there's the especially COVID there's the applications, there's the YouTube videos, and what's there? YouTube te uh, teachers, Instagram teachers. Come on, you are watching Stu from Japan and me from Hungary. Come on, limitless. So, exactly, that's what, nowadays the qualification, a degree, is not that mystified object or whatsoever I can, it's not a relic from the past, it's a relic from the past, I mean, and not the mystified, mysterious object you want to find like this, the Holy Grail, 
It's yeah, not the yeah. only way of English teaching. It's not King Arthur. It's not Galahad. It's not it's not Guinevere. It's not it's not who else? Morgana. It's not that sacred object now. You can rely on yourself and your question as well and your argument. Nowadays, yeah, there's too much, too much, um, in my opinion, weight put on qualifications still, although it has changed. It has yeah. changed. And even Heja, you know, Heja, human resources. Uh, I, I, uh, I've been sending a lot of CVs over the world, anywhere. You know, do you know what the first thing is? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Have you got your certificate? Come on. I've got a YouTube channel. You can hear me speaking. I've got an Instagram. I, uh, I teach on Hello. Come on. It's better than a CV. Yeah, exactly. I bet, again, this is still older styles i mean in terms of cvs people just from my background and going through so many of them i know we don't have time to go through a lot of material that's the only thing um but when when you're assessing see like we're talking about resumes or cvs so that's the only issue with that one but i do think that you can show I think people are beginning to change from the atmosphere of you must have a certificate I to I, I really have. trying to find out from each person. But I do also think that um, in a world where certificates are becoming less and less important because of the amount I of people who have them, uh, I think that the only thing it comes down to is starting to look at the, how the teacher operates and how they can support you and it, and here's the interesting thing the most interesting thing for me um is that when i wanted to study for the jlpt the japanese learning mm -hmm. proficiency test i didn't go to a japanese teacher i went to someone who passed the test <laughs> exactly the test. exactly you but know I myself, person who has learned about the test has not taken it they haven't had the experience of taking the test yes. itself so Yes. Yeah. Yes. I actually have taken a lot of tests and a lot of certificates. Yeah. And that was the reason why. For example, here in Hungary, we have got a lot of um, exams, examinations. I took six of them. And if someone wants to come to me, okay, can you tell me something about, let's say, uh, the national uh, language, uh, language, English language exam test? Yeah, of, of course. I've done it. I passed it. Flying colors, you know, that's it. I Really? Yes. Why? Just to give you hands-on information. That's why I did it. That's why I paid money for it. Now I can tell you how to pass it because I have already passed it. Really? Yeah, of course. And what about this exam? I've already passed it. What about this one? Already passed it. Wow, I know, and, and I see eye to eye to your point of view. That's definitely experience. Experience. I have taken so many, so many unimportant uh, tests and exams in my life that I can actually say and confidently say that I can give you some expert. Uh, advice on how to pass this test, this exam, that test, that exam, whatsoever. I've taken 100 plus certifications, exams and whatsoever just because I want to give the hands-on, the first-hand knowledge and the first-hand experience to my learners. 100%. Um, so I think that... Um... It's and a key thing I want to point out is it doesn't mean again certificates are what well, here's the bonus of why people take why should why people should take courses because if the way I've thought about it recently is that a university degree in an online course there's actually not too much difference you're actually no. collating a Definitely. lot of data together and 
like you can get anything, pretty much any university course online. You can find the information is there somewhere. It's just not collated into one area. Yeah. Now, I think that university courses will become less and less important in the future because of the price Definitely. and the fact that the internet's here and the internet can offer you whatever you want. Now, the difference is willpower. That is really the key difference. And, and you can, you can take a course, but like I said at the start, there only, there's only 5% of the people that actually finish them. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can take a course uh, anywhere now and it mm -hmm. gives you the opportunity to do whatever you yes. want. Now, on the flip side, the good thing about that, the good thing about doing a university degree and the good thing about taking a course surrounded teaching is it collates all the data for you. So then you can then go through all the data in an ordered fashion. You've got it all in front of you and you have all of it easily. We're talking about ease. We're talking about convenience, really. That's what course is, is convenience. Very convenient. Because it has it all there for you. I mean, even in university, the university lecturer is not necessarily going to talk to you individually. It's still yeah. going to be done through an auditorium of people. So here's that. That's a real key thing. Like it's not so one-to-one. -one. It's still like a big group of, of students and often many different teachers from different departments trying to teach different parts of the course to you because it's broken down into several different sectors and they're all specialized. So exactly. it's, segmented. Good. Yeah, it's, it's a really fascinating thing, but it's all collated and that's the good thing. And then you can compare with other people who are doing similar courses. Now that's really great. And the good thing about those teaching courses, is the fact it could be the catalyst, the starting point. If you have the willpower to go for a teaching course and get the certificate, nice job. And then it bundles together all the information you need to know if you've never taught. And that's really the key point. Or if you've taught for a while and it hasn't been successful, and you want to find new techniques, new ways to help your students come on board, or you want to learn new things, they can be amazingly valuable. But what we're really talking about today is the fact that it, I think it's very, it's very unfair for me to say even this statement though, because what I've always said, like I've always said, I don't have a teaching certificate. Um, I haven't got a degree in teaching or whilst my degree is associated with coaching or helping people within uh, and teaching them things around sports um, but the difference is I took all of my five years that I've spent in Japan so far and I was very lucky to get a job basically based on the fact that I have a visa here I know all those things but the key thing is I'm not interested in just sitting in a job I want to be able to help people as much as possible and I spent all five years putting all of my free time into either doing this ridiculous amount of work online yeah. or done yeah, no. in the language you and shine through. time into it. Stu, and it shines through, I'm telling you. It shines through. But that's what that's what I mean. Like if that's what the plan is. The plan is to show people that it's possible because obviously and rightly so to an extent, native speakers are really shit on, to be honest, if they come in as just a native speaker with no background. Which I completely get. But I think it's completely unfair. Now, that's an interesting it, thing. It Sorry doesn't about relate it. to the person, does it? So, okay. Sorry. No, no, no. That's interesting. Please finish it up if, if, if you still have some minutes oh, or no, some I'm pretty much time. I'm just saying, but that's saying an interesting it doesn't, it doesn't relate to the person. You know, it doesn't relate to what the person can do and, and what their passion is and how compassionate they are for each person and, and how... The, th the thing that really kills me, that really grates on my teeth is the person's previous experience is never applied to the job, you know, in a lot of circumstances. And that can actually have a great impact, you know? what you're, You have uh, time in the service industry as well, yeah? So... Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. For me, that situation of dealing with customers is like the first step in teaching. It's the first thing you do, but people don't experience that yes. before going into teaching, you know, and that's where the the, the overcomplicated explanations come in. That's where, you know, that kind of thing yeah. happens, you know. I'm so, telling you, I'm telling you, that's what I said to my learners as well. Hospitality, customer services, and, you know, 
seeing customers, it's kind of like teaching in a way to an extent. Because you need, sometimes there are overcomplicated things which can be actually sorted out very simply. And that's what teaching is. And that's, that's one of the segments teaching a language needs or cries for, if you know what I mean. Sure, of course. Yeah. Now, there's an interesting comment here from Maryam Ahmed Yat. Native speaker is better. Now, that's the thing I'd like to touch on if it, if it, if it doesn't well, fit the problem. We definitely should do another live in regards to that, but let's have a quick touch on it. Because, for example, I can, I can show you the things and, you know, maybe I can uh, finish it up with this one, you know. Here we go. You know, here it is. This is my uh, Oxford Cambridge testing certificate, which is the CELTA certificate. Uh, 180 hours, pass grade A, level 5 certificate. And, all, and I also got my quality, uh, qualified teacher status as well. I, I got the OCR level 2, which is also Oxford Cambridge, OCR. O means Oxford, C means Cambridge. Yeah, that's what I had when I lived in England. I passed it. This is my uh, Hungarian degree. You know, GT, uh, general, I don't know if you can see it, general teaching council for England, qualified teacher status, that's my name, that's my teacher reference number whatsoever. I've got another certificate from from Cambridge, you know, Cambridge English Language Assessment, CELA, you know, Cambridge English as well. I've got it. I've got my uh, another one. I've got this one as well, exploring the Cambridge English Language Assessment again. I've got uh, British Council, understanding IELTS, techniques, whatsoever. I've got 100 plus certificates. And Sometimes because, you know, sometimes because I'm not a native speaker. You know, it started out that uh, I went to the um, governmental office in, uh, in York and I asked them what I need to obtain. What do I need to obtain if I want to be a teacher? They said, okay obtain a QTS. I obtained it. Mm -hmm. Then, okay, I've got the QTS here. All right, so, sorry, it's not enough. Okay, you said it to me, it was enough. So, unfortunately, you know, it's not enough. Okay, what do I need to do uh, to, to be enough? Uh, uh, 120 hours course of TEFL or TESOL, yeah. I did it, I passed it, I got it. Now, here's my QTS, here's my 120 hours TEFL and te uh, TESOL course of certifi uh, certificate of the course. Okay, unfortunately it's not enough. Okay, uh, please can you tell me what is enough? You need a 180 hours uh, certificate. All right, I passed it, went there. Is it enough? No, unfortunately, it's not enough. Why is it not enough? I've got the QTS, 120, 180. You need a 240 hours certificate. All right, I did it. Okay, I went there. Now I've got the 240 hours certificate. All right, it's not in, still not enough. Okay, what would be enough? You need a 300 hours certificate. I did it, I went there. And you know, it's just a vicious cycle and I think that's because I'm not a native speaker. Well, I mean, look, I, the world hasn't completely changed, you know, so it's, there are going to be some some aspects of uh, that that whole process of... Sorry, I'm just trying to sort something out. I've got to shoot off in a sec. Um, there are going to be some aspects of um, that still hanging over. You know, that like we I said know. that already, that that's that is yes. just part and parcel. Like just because we yeah. said today that you can get anything on the internet, bada 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 bada, 
it doesn't mean that that's going to have an influence, you know, like things are changing. That's the key thing. It, it, it was really sold. Have. You have to think about it. The world was run by British people who traveled everywhere and colonized most places. And then the way that they protected themselves was to make themselves seem better than, and then to, to downgrade everything else. And we're just kind of working our way out from that. Not just British people. I'm just giving an example, by the way. Yeah, um, yeah, I know. But, um, and that key thing is still, I mean, you look at posh accent versus uh, a Cockney accent. The Yorkshire accent. That was something that was going yeah. for a long time. And that's still in the culture. It can't, it doesn't, yeah. you're talking about stuff that really is changing things, you know? So, yeah. It's changing. It's been changing. Yeah, that's definitely true. Mm. Sorry, buddy. I've got to shoot off. I've got to quickly do something. But um, I really appreciate your time. And let's do it again. Yeah. I'd love to. I'd love to. And I and I and I really hope we have touched on some important pivotal issues. It's just really it's um, sometimes to me it seems like demagogic if you know what I mean. One hundred percent. So yeah, I'm well into it, buddy. I'm excited. Let's do it again. Thank you very much. Thank you, Stu. No bye bye. And bye bye, everyone. Bye bye. Bye bye.